Okay, we're ready now for our, our next video lesson in uh, processing programming language. And um, we're at uh, this section in the book here, um, the page that uh, begins with this drawing right here of this uh, robot. Now, um, at this point, uh, we're not going to be actually doing anything with the robot. But uh, let me just quickly uh, go through and show you the sketch that draws the robot right here. Okay, we begin with size, stroke weight. Notice the stroke weight is 2. Set the background color, which is uh, a bluish here, sort of a sky blue. And um, we set the ellipse mode to radius. Okay. Now, now you may want to go in and um, review again what the radius mode is and uh, how it differs from other ellipse modes. And then we draw the robot a section at a time. The neck, uh, the neck of the robot, as you see here, is just these three lines. And uh, so we set the stroke to white. And then we draw three lines. Here's one line, here's a second, here's the third. And then we draw the antenna coming out of the head, which are three more lines. And they're also set for white right here. You see that. Uh, the body. Uh, and uh, with the body, we, uh, we set a, a fill, which is, this is red, this is green, so this is kind of a, a yellow fill for this ellipse. Fill zero is a black fill. Notice that fill we either can put in three numbers for red, green, and blue, or one number for gray level. Okay, so this is doing the body and then the head. So that's the sketch for the robot, and I'm not even going to put it in my uh, sketch window here. Okay, now something very important, and all programming languages have variables. And a variable is a way of storing a value that we use over and over again. So let's, uh, let's look at this. Reuse the same values variable. So we're doing this drawing right here. We're drawing these three circles. Now, these circles all have the same y distance down from the from the top, and they all have the same radius. So um, that's what we're doing right here. Um, we set the uh, y distance down right here to be 60, and the diameter uh, here, the left right diameter, and uh, so, uh, and then we draw our three ellipses. Now, because these uh, these parameters are the same for all three circles. Um, we set variables, and let me let me just copy this here and tell you a little bit about this here. I don't know why it's not copying here. Copy. There we go. <clears throat> Okay, now remember, it's putting a number of, of, of uh, command statements all in one line, like I told you it, it is allowed to do. Let me separate those lines here. Okay, now, um, and then let me skip a integer y, integer d. Okay, y is the distance along the y-axis to the center. Uh, the x distance changes for each circle. So here we have, there's our drawing right there. And um, so this distance down here is 60. <clears throat> and the diameter of the circle is 80. So th this... Um, saying D, implying that this is the diameter. Let me try something here. 
Let me set it to 1. We have a diameter of 1. What do we get? We get 3 points. Diameter of 2. Let's do a diameter of 0. What do we get? Nothing that I can see. Diameter of 2. There we go. So it's a little bit bigger points. Now diameter of 5. Oh. And then run. Here we go. Okay. So this is an example. Now these particular kinds of variables are called integer variables. So we must have a, a whole number in there. Integers can be negative, um, and um, uh, that is allowed for integers to be negative. Um, there are other kinds of variables, which we'll talk about momentarily. OK, so it's so our introduction to variables, where we're using the same value over and over again. We define a variable to be equal to that value, and then we put the variable inside the function statement like we're doing right here. Okay. Okay, now we can change values of variables. And um, although this particular example we've uh, we've already I've already done changing the values. So here um, well, let me just copy it. Okay, and here we have multiple statements on the same line. I can run. What is it? Oh, okay. Here's what it's not liking is we don't have a space between INT and Y. See that down there? And that's giving me an error. And uh, here, let me just delete all this here. Uh, looks like a couple of things might have gone wrong there. Copy, paste. Okay, we have size, integer y, put a space there, integer d, put a space there, now run, and we get the three. So we can shorten the diameter or increase uh, let me do that let me make the diameter 100 see what happens so it changes and all three gets smaller let's do 70 and run this so you see that oh look what I'm how stupid of me I'm changing the size of the box and not the diameter. Okay, 120. Put that back over here. Let me make this to be 100. Here, 100. And so we have the circles just touching one another. Um, notice that we have the distance from the top down is 100. And we're setting this diameter to be 100. And then the, the circles are just touching there. Notice that um, we, as we do the spacing, let me bring this down, the ellipses here. The spacing from one ellipse to the next is 100. So if the diameter is 100, you know, I think in the past I was referring to this variable as radius and not diameter. So, um, um, that was wrong. Okay, so as we separate, um, let's see, um, the we separate them going from 75 to 175 to 275. So the they're separated by a distance from here to here is 100, which is twice the radius. So which would be the diameter. And uh, so, indeed, that is the diameter. Okay, now 
Let me go down. Um, here I'm mentioning that we have an integer variable. So we can use two different statements. We can say define a variable without defining its value. So we say integer x, which is what we up here when we define the variable, we set its value. Integer y is 100, integer d is 100. Here I do integer x, and then in a separate line I say x equal to 12. So let's look at that here. So I do integer x semicolon. We're going to get a default size uh, window for the display. And then I do x equals 12. Now, I'm not actually displaying anything. I'm just uh, setting the variable x here. And I can run the program. Here I have a box, but I'm not putting anything in the box. But the program runs. No error. Now, suppose I put x equal 12.2. And I'm getting type mismatch, float does not match with integer. So this, with a, have a decimal, is called a floating point variable. Without the decimal, it's an integer. So it's giving me a warning here that this is not an integer. But I can still run, and now it says, cannot convert from float to integer. So it's not converting this value and putting it in the integer. So notice that that generates an error in processing. And indeed, here's an example. They're discussing that right there. You generate an error by putting a float in an integer. However, if we, we can take float, OK, and we can, we can make float 12.2, and if I run it, float, oh, I forgot to define the variable. Notice that mistake. Float x, there. Float x. And I forgot to put a semicolon. I'm filled with errors today. Float x. There we go. So I get no error everything works, except I'm not displaying anything. Now, what happens if I put an integer in there? It'll still work, because it still interprets the integer 12 as a float. In other words, it interprets it as 12.0. OK, so I can put an integer into a floating variable, but I cannot put a floating number into an integer variable. OK. A little complication there. Other programming languages uh, do allow uh, to, to define an integer variable by putting uh, trying to put a float into it. But what happens is it converts the float into an integer by just dropping off the fraction part. OK, now let's look at this. Adjust the size and see what follows. OK, let's, um, let's just copy this piece of code here. There we go. Now I can run it. OK, so here's our code. Now, notice I'm drawing two lines. But then after the lines, I'm drawing the circle. So the circle overlays the lines. Um, just out of curiosity, what would happen if I put no stroke here? Like that, no stroke. And indeed, we don't have a boundary on the, uh, on the circle, and the lines don't get drawn either when we put no stroke. 
So notice that. Okay, now. Now notice I haven't defined width and height. The width and height are automatically these two numbers. This is automatically the width, and this is automatically the height. So even though I haven't defined width and height as variables in the program, um, they come out to be these two values right there. Now, they're saying, let's change the size here and see what happens. Adjust the size, see what happens. Okay, let me do this as just the size here, 200. Run. So notice that the orientation here on these lines changes. Why? Because these variable values have changed when I changed size. So this is the point on this exercise telling you what width and height are already defined as soon as we set a size box. Now, suppose I take size out. I can take size out by commenting it. There, I'll comment it. Now run, and I get the default box size, and they're automatically defined according to the default box. Okay. Now, a little math. Now, as they're pointing out right here, people often assume that math and programming are the same thing, and, and, and they're not, not at all. In fact, programming involves very little uh, complex mathematics. It's almost always addition, subtraction, multiply, and divide. And um, so we define... Um, Subtraction, usually in math, we define subtraction in terms of adding negative numbers, and we define multiplication in terms of doing multiple additions, and then we define divide in terms of the inverse of multiplication. That's the way it's done in mathematics. In programming, uh, the, those operations may not be executed in exactly that way because of how we're representing uh, numbers and therefore how we do arithmetic inside of a program. But virtually all of programming is done with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And arguably, it's all done uh, in terms of addition. And um, so here, uh, an example of doing that, I'm going to copy this. And okay, so we set the size of our box. We do these variables. Let me put spaces in there so I don't get errors. Now notice here, we're going to draw a rectangle using these three variables. And then what I do is I change the value of the variable x right here. And then I change the value of the variable x again right here. And then um, I actually put an arithmetic expression right inside that. That's allowed in programming. We do it a lot. Now, let me just do that. So what do we have here? Well, first, x is 25. So this distance would be 25. Then we, we change, so we draw that rectangle here. We change x to be 125. Then we draw this. Then we take whatever 125 is and we subtract 250 from it. So now this, uh, this rectangle starts over here somewhere 
it's actually out to the left of the this line right here so because it's a negative number so we subtract so we add uh, 100 and then subtract 250 so this is start this rectangle starting at x equal negative 150 now um, the y position notice that y is originally going to be 25 which is this distance down here and then here we get y plus h so it's 25 plus 20 so it's all the way down here and because this this height is 20 this rectangle starts exactly at the bottom of this rectangle and then we change y again right here where the value of y is actually replaced by y plus h times 2 so let me let me just do this a different way to give you some idea what's going on I'm gonna put right here I'm gonna put y equals y plus h times 2 like that and I'm just going to replace this with y so I should get the same drawing I got a minute ago this drawing when I run it there and I think that's the same drawing hopefully now, so see what we're doing here. Now, you never see this when you do math. You never, what does this mean? Y equals Y plus H over 2. Well, in computers, what it means is we take the current value of Y, which is set previously in the program. We add this to it, and we take this sum, and we put it in and create a new value for Y. So this will be the new value for y going forward. So equals doesn't mean they're the same thing. What it means is do this computation on the right side of the equal sign, take whatever that number is, and plug it in to the, to the variable that's set up on the left side of the, uh, of the equal sign. So for example, I could change this variable to z. z and then I put Z and I leave this Y and I run. And I'm getting an error because I haven't set Z. Oh, now look at that. What have I done wrong here? What I've done wrong is I need to set Z to find the variable Z. So I say Z is an integer. So I'll do that right here. Now when I run, it runs. But notice, this isn't the same drawing anymore. Because we didn't change the value of y. We took the old value of y and we kept it. And we did put this computation, instead of putting it back into y, we put it into z. So if I put z here, now I get the drawing that, uh, that I want. So. The way we do arithmetic in computers is not the way you're used to doing arithmetic inside of math. And um, so um, now let's do, let's look at this right down here. Let's look at this statement. This statement here, we're setting x to be an integer but we have an arithmetic expression here. The value that goes into x is 4 times 5, which is 20. 20 plus 4 is 24. So we're putting the value of 24 into x. So this expression is evaluated, and this number is put into x. Now, uh, we have rules of order of operations in computers, and we will do multiplication before we do the addition. Now, uh, sometimes I look at expressions and it can be a bit confusing uh, what the orders of operation might be. For example, if I do 4 times 5 and then I do a 
divide uh, divide by two or something like that. And sometimes it can be confusing what operation is being performed first. So in order to avoid that confusion, we can put arithmetic expressions into parentheses. And uh, usually, if there's any possibility of confusion, I put my arithmetic expressions into parentheses. So for example, here's an example. So here it's clearly going to do 4 times 5 first and uh, compute 20 and give me 24. Now if I put parentheses around 4, if I did this, if I did integer x equals, now if I do 4 plus 4 like that and then times 5. What happens, the computer will automatically do the 4 plus 4 first, which is 8, and then 8 times 5 is 40. So the expressions in parentheses will always get done first. So like I said, if there's any doubt of confusion as to which operations are being done first, I use parentheses to make it absolutely clear both to myself and to anyone who might be reading the program. Okay, now something else that is uh, quite common in computer languages that you will, won't see in normal arithmetic. Here I wrote use x plus equal 10. This is shorthand notation. What this means is we're taking the value of x and replacing it by x plus 10. So x plus equal 10 says we take the previous value for x, add 10 to it, and put it in and create a new value for x. y minus equal 15 is similar. We take the previous value of y, subtract 15 from it, and put it in as a new value for y. Now, we have another shorthand notation, x plus plus. This is shorthand for saying x equals x plus 1, so we take the previous value for x, add 1 to it, put it into new value, y minus minus, similarly, is y equals y minus 1. Okay, now, so that's a, a lot to take in here, and, um, uh, okay, now, I think this might be a good place uh, to stop and uh, before going on to the the next subject uh, which is uh, uh, really we're going into doing loops uh, which is, which are critically important in programming so here we've done several new things in terms of computer arithmetic and um, so I want you to uh, to try to understand these things and then we'll move on to the next video.